Haunted Christmas. Christmas of 1999 was evolving into one of the most difficult ones ever. Nothing seemed to be going right, and worse, she was getting lost in the dense fog of eerie, de eerie depression. This is not just the usual holiday blues and fatigue we can all experience at Christmas, but rather a more, uh, much more pronounced wet, heavy blanket of gloom. Interestingly enough, she was intrigued to later learn that other members of her family were experiencing the same thing. She was particularly feeling loss of loved ones, especially that of her deceased sister. A couple of weeks before Christmas, she was given a sound effect machine that also contained a radio. The only time she would have the radio on is when she was on her way out and needed to hear the local weather report. She happened upon a local station that was playing old-fashioned Christmas tunes. One in particular, she was emotionally, uh, was emotionally evocative. Its title is Have Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, a sad forlorn melody, but not completely devoid of some hope. The question the Christmas music was mixed with oldies music. The station was way too corny for her taste, but it aroused a memory in her. Her mother and her sister both listened to such stations. She recalled teasing her sister about it, and that is why the station call letters seemed so familiar to her. The oldies became too much for her, so she kept the radio on CBC which also provided local weather forecasts. Nevertheless, whenever she returned home, the dial would inevitably be back on the old station that haunted true, that little tune. Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas would be playing. It was way beyond coincidence that the dial had been changed and that particular song was playing every time. It's been changed a particular song. Oh yeah, and every time on the radio. First look, some small comfort in the strange incidents relating to them as though they were her deceased sister's way of letting her know that she was not alone in the Chris in this Christmas or that the situation was not necessarily hopeless. She listened to the lyrics carefully at one point. The words really gave her chills were, have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide glad. From now on, our troubles will be far away. Through the years, we all will be together if the fates allow. Until then, we'll have to muddle through this somehow. So have yourself a merry little Christmas now. It was anything but a merry Christmas and the fates were not smiling favorably down on her life. The reoccurrence of the song has beginning to spook her as well as exasperate her depression. She finally unplugged the machine and it remained unplugged until well into the new year. The radio doll was not since moved on its own. Debbie Allen relates the following account. She and her husband currently reside in Margate, Kent, England. However, the events here occurred in their former home in Hillstead, England. Debbie herself had been published having written an article of the murder of her son, Alfred, who I'm sorry to say is the little boy in her story. Tragically, Alfie is not the only child that Debbie has lost. So this one's called Ghostly Playmate. When Alfie was about two or three years old, we lived at the old Hillside house. It was around nine or ten o'clock one evening. Alfie was up in his house in his room and Steve and I were sitting downstairs in a room directly beneath Alfie's bedroom. We were watching the telly with my mom and dad when we heard Alfie up in his room as though we, he was moving around, banging toys and talking to himself. It was abnormally loud, so Steve and I got up to investigate and put the baby back to bed. We were surprised to find upon reaching the nursery that Alfie was sound asleep oblivious to all the noise and the commotion that we had heard from this very room not two minutes ago. However, all his toys were strewn about the room, curiously got the best of us, and we reluctantly woke him up and asked him if he had gotten up to all the play to play with his toys. He replied that he had been playing and talking with Rita. He was adamant about the identity of his playmate. Steve and I were quite shocked. The entire situation was so bizarre. He had been cheerfully playing and talking a minute later and was deeply asleep the next. Strangest of all is that his playmate Rita was our daughter who died of crib death on October 31st, 1979. How could he have been playing with his dead sister whom he didn't even know? In the old hillside house, you often felt a lot of unusual sensations, like you were being watched. Well, we've all felt something touching our skins like that. 